Mr. Chairman, I appreciate the opportunity, and I want to start off by thanking the House Armed Services Committee for their work in crafting this bill and improving the lives of our service members and providing for the support for the spouses of service members. I've got a number of, I've got six amendments that I'm proposing here. All of them are straightforward. All of them are common sense, and I, and I think all of them deserve um, consideration. First of all, Amendment number 221 is NOAA's North Atlantic Right Well Vessel Speed Rule. I'm sure that all of you are familiar with this. This has to do with the speed limits that are being proposed on boats between 35 to 65 foot. They want to have how you enforce speed limits out on the water is beyond me, but nevertheless, they want them to adhere to a 10 knots per, per hour, which would come out to be about 11 and a half miles per hour. And... It, it, it would devastate recreational fishing. It would devastate the, the whole commercial recreational fishing along the Atlantic coast, including in the state of Georgia, where I have the honor and privilege of representing the entire coast of Georgia, over 100 miles of pristine coastline. Let me make it clear that we want to protect the right whales. We understand this. No boater goes out thinking, oh, I wish I would hit a right whale. They don't want to hit a right well. They want to make sure that they avoid them at all costs. There is technology available now that will allow them to do this without imposing this rule. And that's what, why I'm proposing this. This is a, a bipartisan agreement that we can protect the endangered right whales without harming our ports. It would also have a negative impact on our ports, on our harbor pilots. The economic engine of the southeast United States is Georgia Ports Authority would have a negative impact on them. What the amendment would do would delay this rule for a year, allowing us to explore those technological solutions. So that's the first amendment. The second one, 529, the Combat Readiness Training Centers, the CRTCs. We have four in this country. One of them is being proposed to be closed down. That is in my district in Savannah, Georgia. We don't need to be closing down any CRTCs. The world is on fire, and this is a short-sighted and I think a very boneheaded move on, on behalf of the administration to suggest that we close this down. The CRTCs play a major role in global power projection, and I'm very fortunate to have one in my hometown of Savannah. I also want to thank Mr. Azell from Mississippi for co-sponsoring this amendment to prevent any cuts, any cuts to any of the four CRTCs across the country. Amendment number three is um, Amendment number 681, State Strategic Stockpile Amendment. Mr. Chairman, you're very familiar with this. You all know that we have federal stockpiles. This will not replace the federal stockpiles, but instead it will supplement the federal stockpiles. States have specific needs in the way of medications, in the way of drugs. This would extend this program to finance these state stockpiles so that we can continue on with them and that the states would have their specific needs met as well. Um, the fourth one I have is Amendment number 728. It's the TRICARE Pharmacy Amendment. That would require any pharmacy benefit manager, any PBM, that contracts would try here to meet minimum network ad adequacy standards and the reimburse pharmacies on reasonable and relevant terms based on Medicaid pharmacy reimbursement rates. What is happening now is that the company that has been awarded this contract, Express Scripts, has been trying has been diverting patients to their own mail order pharmacies. They've been cutting out independent retail pharmacies, which it, which really does impact veterans who are have a relationship with their independent retail pharmacies and ha now are being inconvenienced by not being able to go there. It would simply say that they have to reimburse them accordingly with the, the others that they reimburse as well. In 2022 alone, approximately 15,000 15, independent pharmacies were excluded from the TRICARE pharmacy network. In fact, on April 22nd of this year, Epic Pharmacies, which consist of approximately 1,100 pharma independent pharmacies, were dropped from the network. This would prohibit this from, doing, from, from happening. That's, that's at, at the least that our veterans deserve. The next, um, the fifth amendment that I have is um, amendment number 220, critical mineral extraction. As you know, I chair the subcommittee on critical materials in, this, in the Energy and Commerce Committee. This would give our, our, our allies as well as our country the ability to, 
to, to look and see how we can better extract critical minerals from our country. We have an abundance of them here. We need to process them. We need to make sure that we are mining them here, and we need to make sure that our allies are so that we would end our dependence on our adversaries such as China and Russia. The, the Sixth Amendment is um, the Amendment Number 534, Underseas Cables in NDAA Amendment. That was submitted um, to exempt undersea cables from the National Marine Sanctuary Act special use permit requirements due to national security concerns. This is very important. What they are having to do is to, to congregate these together in order to miss some of these marine sanctuaries. This raises a national security concern because we are, we are susceptible then to our adversaries being able to attack these, which would have a negative influence, of course, on our country. And that's something that, that we need to do. This would, um, my amendment would help increase the resiliency, the redundancy, and the security of submarine cables by ensuring a greater diversity of routes and less regulatory burdens during deployment and maintenance. Finally, Amendment Number 594, which I am co-sponsor of, is a CFAX reauthorization. That is the Chemical Facility Anti-Terrorism Standards Program. It has expired. It needs to be. Uh, it needs to be um, reauthorized. Companies want this. They want to have the ability to to use the FBI's database and to partner with the Department of Homeland Security for expertise on protecting their facilities from cyber and physical threats. And along with Representative Laurel Lee, we would reauthorize the CFATS program, and I'm proud to partner her on this. And that is all I have, Mr. Chairman.